Well, I would like to welcome you full heartedly and the delegation. I really think, without exaggeration, that you have arrived at a historic occasion. And none of us will ever forget forgiving selfish or miss it. I don't know how long it will rest. I know how difficult it is, but I also know how important it means to the whole people and maybe to the entire world. You are taking it very seriously. The peace is an Israeli interest and an interest of a lot of people. I don't see any contradiction between the American leadership and the needs of the people in the Middle East. And we shall try to do sincerely and profoundly together with you, not to miss this call, which is unique and that arrived under circumstances which nobody can guarantee they will rest forever or they will be repeated in the future. Saying that, I believe the address of President Obama created a change in the Middle East. I cannot recall any other address in recent history that left after him such a feeling of elation. I think it was address extremely sensitive touchy concerning all sides without trying to play one against another, playing compliments when it was justified, criticizing when it was necessary in the most honest way. And we are extremely grateful for that address. I think it's a real contribution to help all of us to overcome this great occasion in an extremely difficult corridor of problems. I think we shall be right if we should put first things first. I think we have to take the bull by the horn. And I see four points which are really of great importance. And that is the state solutions, as it's written in the roadmap, then a state for the Palestinians, a state for us. The second is the security of Israel. The third is the independence for the Palestinians. And the fourth is the chance to build upon it or with it a regional peace. The people, all people, desire it and need it. I know it's full of problems, but the occasion to let a great wind to sweep over the detailed problems is very impressive. I, I wrote it, I want simply to repeat it, I shall never forget in my own experience, an hour time in the Middle East, one hour, they changed the reason, the Middle East. And that was the visit of Sadat from Cairo to Israel. It took one hour. And after this hour, everything was changed in the Middle East. The strength, the drama, the greatness that this represented was an unbelievable contribution. I think we can have a second experience, maybe not in an hour, Maybe not in a day, maybe it will take weeks and months, but the greater and the sooner is the better. And I think we can move together to do it. It is in this spirit that I want to welcome you with the most serious expectations and attitude and the most sincere wish that we shall not fail that we shall succeed all of us. And we shall try to do our very best to make this vision a reality for the better and good of all people. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for your always kind and gracious words of welcome. Uh, 
uh, both individually and uh, representing the President and Secretary of State of the United States. It's an honor to meet with you, uh, to seek your advice and counsel. No person has done more and seen more than you have uh, in terms of the long-term effort to achieve peace uh, and reconciliation in this region. Uh, you have always, and you continue today, uh, to represent the people of Israel uh, with great honor and distinction. But beyond that, uh, your voice resonates throughout the world uh, as a statesman, uh, as someone who has acquired the experience and the wisdom uh, that makes your views weighty uh, and worthy of great consideration. And so uh, I'm, I'm personally very grateful to you for your courtesy, your hospitality, and most of all, uh, for your advice. Uh, I, I do want to say a few words about uh, the effort in which we're now engaged. And I want to begin by stating again, uh, clearly and emphatically beyond any doubt, that the United States' commitment to the security of Israel remains unshakable. We are working hard to achieve the objective of comprehensive peace in the Middle East, to which you have referred, Mr. Preston including a Palestinian state side by side in peace and security with the Jewish state of Israel. The President and the Secretary of State have made our policy clear. Israelis and Palestinians have a responsibility to meet their obligations under the roadmap. It's not just their responsibility, we believe it's in their security interest as well. But it's also in the interests of all others who seek to promote peace, Americans, Europeans, Arabs, and others, to support this effort through tangible steps. And we all share an obligation to create the conditions for the prompt resumption and early conclusion of negotiations. We are now engaged in serious discussions with our Israeli, Palestinian, and regional partners to support this effort. And let me be clear, these are not disagreements among adversaries. The United States and Israel are and will remain close allies and friends. My meetings today with the President and with other Israeli officials are discussions among friends who share a common set of objectives, peace, security, and prosperity for all the people of this region. The United States, under President Obama and Secretary of State Clinton, remains fully committed to working with our friends, our allies, and our partners to achieve that comprehensive peace. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.